Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to complete my BTC Pay server stack by creating my Tor services. I only need my Tor services to complete my stack. Before I begin, I think it's important that I will remind you that this tutorial deals only with the basic architecture, uh, with the basic architecture stack of BTC Pay. And I hope that this implementation will help you to better understand how the BTC Pay server stack works, but it is important to remember that this stack isn't meant to be used in production. This stack isn't secured at all, even though we are using Tor, so be warned. So now that I got the warnings out of the way, we can see that our BTC Pay server will communicate with the rest of the world using a Tor server. BTC Pay server requires us to use some web server to provide it with a secure communication. So we can either generate a web server with SSL using services like um, Nginx or Apache and Let's Encrypt and so on, or we can choose to use Tor. I decided to use Tor for a couple of reasons. First, um, to my surprise, it is extremely easy to configure. I was quite surprised by how easy this process was. And I think it is even easier than using a traditional tool such as SSL and DNS servers and so on. The configuration is very, very quick and you don't need to do a lot in order to get your Tor server uh, up and running. But the second reason is the community itself. And for some time now, it is quite apparent that the Bitcoin community and the Tor community, they share a lot of ideals and values and goals and principles, including some design principles, some technical principles. And I think it is safe to assume that we will see Tor gaining more and more popularity and usage within the Bitcoin ecosystem. And we will see Tor principles also implemented more and more in Bitcoin uh, related product. Anyway, in order to work with Tor, I am going to create two services. The first will be the Tor Gen or the Tor Generator. This service will take some file from the local machine and it will generate a Tor configuration file, also known as the TorRC2 file. And this TorRC file will be shared with my other services that are using Tor and specifically it will be used with the Tor server itself. Basically, we have a process that will help us to generate the configuration file for the Tor service. Okay, so now it is time to actually create our services. And the first service will be the Tor gen, the Tor generator. And going to create a service just as before, the container name should be similar. So container name equal to Tor gen, so Tor gen, yep. And I want it to restart automatically, so restart always. And the image, I will get it from the BTC Pay Server uh, Docker Hub, and it should be Docker gen. And the version number should be 075. Yes, this is the version number. There we go. Now this service, this is the only one in which I'm going to have an entry command or an entry point. And this command will say something very simple. It's going to say, please use the Docker gen binaries that are located under the user folder, user local bin Docker gen. And I'm going to use this Docker gen software, this Docker gen um, binaries in order to create my torrc2 file from the input files. But before I can actually start to create my torrc2 file, I need to specify a few runtime arguments. First, I want this software, this torgen, this dockergen, sorry, process to notify the SIGHUB process on any changes. And the SIGHUB is basically a, a type of signal that will prevent our service from running unused processes. And this is something that happens on the operating system level. 
And I will not explain how those Linux processes work, but I guess it is always a good thing to know, at least in general, what is the rationale behind this notify sig hop command over here. Anyway, the process that we care about is Tor, and I want to watch and wait for this process every 5 to 30 seconds. Now I'm going to specify the path at which I will eventually place my template file. This will be one of the input file for my docker gen uh, binary. And it should eventually be located under etc docker gen templates and torrc template. We don't have this file yet, but we will create it later on. And the last thing that I want to create, the last thing that I want to specify for this entry point is where it should store the final result, the torrc2 file, the tor configuration file. And it should be under user, local, etc, tor, and torrc2. This file is the final tor configuration file. And we can see that we are also using this file in our BTC pay server. It will look for this file, for this configuration file. It will also look for it in this um, specific volume under this specific path, which we already declared. So as we can see, it's similar to the one that we specified in our entry point. And now we just need to mount our volume. And the first volume is quite simple. This is the torrc data itself. So torrc data. And I want to mount this uh, data volume onto user, local, etc, and tor. This is, of course, the path where we expect to find our torrc2 uh, file. And now I can mount my local files, the one that I saw over here, those two files here at the bottom. And first, we know that we need to create this torrc template file. So I'm going to create this file in my working directory. And this file is a template file. It is basically a file that is sensitive to changes in my environment variables, both on the local machine as well as in our uh, Docker stack. And the Docker generate process, it knows how to pass information out of this template file in order to generate our final Tor configuration file. If you know how to work with template files, you can of course create your own template file by yourself. But I'm going to use the default template file, which can be found at the BTC pay server Docker page on GitHub. So I'm just going to copy paste it over here. And now I want to mount this file into my Tor generator uh, service. So I'm going to take this file from the local working directory to our C template from the local directory. And I want to upload this file or mount this file, sorry, to etc, docker gen, templates, templates, to our C template, and I'm going to make it a read-only file. And we can see this is, of course, the file that our entry point expects to find. There we go. Now the second file that I want to mount is the SOX file. And this should be the SOX files from the local machine. And I don't want to get into how Tor works, but in general, our Tor service, it needs this file in order to create a secure connection from our local machine. After all, all of the communication eventually takes place on our local machine. So I'm going to create, take this uh, local SOX file, which can be found under var run docker SOX, and I will mount it into temp docker SOX, or docker SOX, and I will make sure that it will be a read-only file. When I get my process to run, this torgen process will use the docker gen binaries and our local files in order to generate the tor configuration file and my tor service will eventually use this file. So this is it for the tor gen process. Now moving on to the tor service itself. 
And we are going to start with the usual tor. Let's make some room. A container name should also be equal to tor. I want it to restart automatically. So restart always. The image file will come from the BTC pay server Docker Hub. And it should be the tor version, if I'm not mistaken, 0358. Yes, 0358. There we go. Now I'm going to expose port 9050, just as we saw in the diagram, as well as from the environment variables themselves. All the communication will be routed via this uh, port 9050. And to the environment variables, I'm going to begin with Tor password. I'm going to keep it as the default BTC pay server. And I hope that I don't need to tell you that you shouldn't keep using the default passwords. I'm just doing it because I'm lazy and this is just a tutorial. But again, when you do something for production, think about security. Be much more caution than that. Anyway, the second variable is the location of the Tor configuration file or the Tor additional configuration. Basically, this is where the Tor RC2 file is stored. And eventually, I will mount this volume onto user local etc tor and tor rc2. This is basically the tor rc data that you created. We are going to mount it onto this uh, path so it can find the tor rc2 file. Finally, I'm going to use the tor extra arguments uh, variable to make sure that I can authenticate cookies using my service. So cookie, pay attention with a capital C and A for authentication, cookie authentication, authentication, there we go, should be equal to one. There we go. And now I'm going to mount my volumes. And the first volume that I will mount will be for the Tor RC data for the Tor configuration file. And of course, I'm going to mount it onto user local etc and tor and the last volume should be for the hidden services so it should be tor services data and i will mount this one onto var lib tor and hidden services hidden services there we go and well this is actually that's, that's it we created our complete BTC pay stack using Docker Compose. Um, we can now use the Docker Compose to run this stack and we should have our BTC pay server up and running. So let's put this claim to the test. Let's do in our terminal Docker Compose up. Okay, we can see that I have a couple of errors here. Okay, so at Postgres it should be volumes with an S at the end. And in the Tor environment variables, I should move the volumes as well. So in Postgres, let's do volumes. And over here, the volumes are under the environment variables. So I'm just going to move them to spaces uh, in front. What else do I got here? Ah, um, Tor service says, not Tor service. I'm missing an S, I think. Let's see. Now let's give it a go. Now before I leave you, I just want to show you how you can access your BTC pay server. I mean, after all, you want to play with the BTC pay server itself. So I'm going to look under my volume folder. This is the folder in which I configured my Docker installation to keep all of its volumes. And I want to look at the Tor services data volume over here under data and BTC pay server. By the way, this uh, service name 
Maybe you can have a look at our Docker Compose file later on and try to see if you can change it uh, by manipulating some of the environment variables in our uh, Docker Compose file. But this is just a side note, something to explore later on. Anyway, under the hostname file, we can find this onion address. And this is basically the onion address of our BTC pay server. I can now take this address and I can copy and I can copy paste it into a Tor browser. And there we go. This is my BTC pay server. As you can see, I can log into it. I can play with it. Um, it will require some time for it to complete its synchronization. Depends on your machine. Usually it takes about a day or so. But this is it. We got our BTC pay server using Docker Compose. And I hope that this process helped you to better understand what BTC pay server is all about, how it's supposed to work, how it can be um, configured and what you can do with it. And well, that's it. Thank you for watching.